Okay, so this is a uh, question seven for assignment three. Um, it says a microphone produces a sound in air. Figure seven point one shows a diagram drawn to scale representing a sound wave of frequency. So we have a frequency here. Do take note, this is frequency, but it is in kilohertz. Okay. Now part A. Explain how sound is produced and transmitted in air. So this is one of the, one of those typical questions that um just pure memory work. So the idea here is the microphone, okay, the microphone. I'm going to erase and rewrite. The microphone, okay, um, causes vibration in the air. Causes vibration and causes the air particles around it to be displaced. Around it to be displaced. Okay? So, what happens subsequently is that this uh, displaced air particles will displace neighboring air particles. Okay. So this process actually repeats to create a series of compression and reflection Okay, which allow the sound to travel as a longitudinal wave, longitudinal wave, a wave from the microphone. Okay, so it's quite a long answer here, but um key idea here is microphone causes vibration okay microphone causes vibration causes air particles around it to be displaced okay so this vibration causes air particles around it to be displaced this displaced air particle will displace neighboring air particles so imagine like i punch a person next to me the person beside me punch another person next to him this whole thing will actually continue way okay, to create a series of compression and refraction which then actually is sound, okay? So it allows the sound to travel as a longitudinal wave away from the microphone. So that's all, part A. Now, in part B, it says on figure 7.5, mark the position of the center of compression with a C and the center of refraction with a R. So compression obviously is where it is the most packed, very right? compressed, so most packed. Refraction is actually where it is the most spread out, okay, most spread out. Now, so if you look at this whole position here, you can realize that, oh, at this region here, this is where the lines are most concentrated. So this will be compression, compression, compression. Refraction is where the line is most spread out. So you can see over here, the lines are actually the most spread out. So most likely this will be a refraction. Over here, this will be a refraction. Okay? Now, they also state the wavelength by measuring the sound wave uh, State the wavelength of the sound wave by measuring with a ruler. So uh, many apologies here. I don't have a ruler with me. Please wait a moment. Okay, because I'm writing on my tablet, so I think it's not going to be easy to measure the length itself. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to go about doing it. So I want to take my ruler. I can actually measure between refraction to refraction or compression to compression. So let me use compression to compression. So it makes it a little bit easier. So that's compression is over here. Compression is over here. So I'm just going to take my ruler to measure this length over here. Okay, so I'll call it X. So I'm going to use the reading X for the rest of my thing. So the reading wavelength will be X. Now calculate the speed of sound in air. So I'm going to use X as a reference. So to calculate the speed of sound, most probably because the wave question, I'll use V equals F lambda. 
As mentioned, the question says that the frequency is 5.2 kilohertz. So F is actually equals to 5.2 kilohertz, which translates to 5,200 hertz. So the, so the speed of sound would be actually 5,200 multiplied by the lambda that you have calculated here. In this case, it's X. So you just need to press your calculator. Okay, for my case here, I'll just write 5,200X in terms of uh, CM per second. Okay, in terms of CM per second, because my length here is CM per second. Okay, so you press your calculator, you work it out. That'll be your answer. Okay, okay. So that's the end for question seven.